my name's Chris Covage. I'm the editor with Australia in Space magazine and Australia in Space TV. I've just attended a Geospatial Intelligence Ideation Forum here at the Maroochydore Surf Club, courtesy of the Sunshine Coast Council and Geospatial Intelligence. This forum was attended by cross-sector, academia, industry and government, with a range of ideas and proposals put forward for the creation of a centre of excellence for geospatial intelligence here on the Sunshine Coast. Our objective here today is to provide exposure of the Sunshine Coast region as the place to test tech uh, in a real world environment. It was great to see the interest, the energy and the will to collaborate on some of the ideas that were generated in this room today. It shows the, the excitement uh, and the possibilities and opportunities of collaborating in this space of geospatial intelligence and what the Sunshine Coast may offer in terms of facilitating uh, bringing these people together. Sunshine Coast is a particular interest to us because uh, it's really a centre of excellence for uh, innovation and technology. I mean the thing I like about the Sunshine Coast Council for example is they don't just say they're going to do something, they actually do it and they implement it. So that's part of it. The other thing is education in this area is incredible. I mean we've got some really good universities producing some really good educated uh, spatial uh, graduates. Background is within GIS within all forms. I've worked within the teaching of GIS as well as the application of remote sensing. Um, my degree was within environmental science at the University of the Sunshine Coast. My honours degree was uh, forest ecology using spatial analysis and remote sensing. So my research was looking at a vulnerable species of the greater glider within southeast Queensland and how it was impacted by a piece of lodging legislation which was inputted in the 90s and basically how the landscape had changed since that um, piece of legislation was put into place. I moved to Brisbane um, to get a industry job and then I moved to Melbourne to get an industry job and I missed the coast every single day. I was just talking about how I missed getting up and having a surf before work and just things that you kind of miss when you move into a city. Um, so being able to practice like you know what I enjoy intellectually as well as in the space that I enjoy physically, just marrying the two would be fantastic. Well, you know, we do a lot of work globally. You know, we've worked in South America and Mexico and the Middle East and you know Australia has so many issues and it's a perfect country for remote sensing because it's so large and so diverse its environment. I, I think we can do more to you know, better manage our environment in Australia. So our, our ideal goal would be actually to use this technology better in Australia. Yeah. Everything has a location and so what we aim to do is find out the what, where and the why. So we find out using remote sensing where things are happening and what's happening in there but then we use analytics to work out why it's happening in there. And we're doing a lot of work in the health area, which is a really good example, you know, with epidemic intelligence, for example, even disease outbreaks don't happen randomly, they happen in a location. And so it's our job to find out why and what's affecting, the, what, what environmental factors are affecting that um, and, and how it can possibly spread. Within the agricultural sector, we're looking at the health of forestry and tree removal and tree growth and carbon, a big, big job of carbon at the moment for rehabilitation and carbon credits and fire of course, emergency management, fire, floods, cyclones and the prediction is this year is going to be quite severe. Well satellites can look anywhere at any time and very quickly so we can actually monitor floods, the extent of the floods, the damage from cyclones, bushfires, pre-bushfires, during bushfires and after bushfires, very valuable land management activities. QFES is actually quite a mature operator in the geospatial space. Uh, everything from desktop analytics, so that's from raw data ingestion through to analytical capability in terms of data layers, um, you know, asking those sort of what if questions, right through to publishing in online uh, platforms. So we actually have a platform that every local government in Queensland has access to. Uh, includes, I think at the moment it's about four to five hundred data layers that are in there that can be used in uh, emergency management scenarios. What we do in smart cities is we're essentially focused on helping the organisation become more efficient and effective and that typically involves uh, addressing pa pain points or problems the organisation has and take them through an, an innovation process where we have now successfully brought through 84 problems and turned them into solutions that are now implemented. The highlights for me are things to do with the subsea cable and how we design the building to be for four cables and for an, a domestic, I think of it as an international um, lo terminal and also a domestic terminal, so connecting the international to the domestic uh, space. Some of those characteristics, bringing that in and making it bigger rather than a, a small box has been really beneficial. Um, but across the region we've actually got telecommunications infrastructure that's being leased by major carriers in Australia and our own optic fibre that's being used by carriers and importantly 
for me that un enabling infrastructure is now connecting to things that are above ground and supporting all of the things that council is looking to do, which is achieve, if it's counting the number of vehicles that are going through an area, um, managing privacy so we don't actually taking people's information, just simply counting vehicles, but we use the same technology to count and aggregate the number of people and pe uh, walking or cycling or using scooters or prams. We even count dogs now. So it's the, the ability to use artificial intelligence to do edge processing and then actually turn that into data that's available not just to the one area of council that asks for it, but it's actually available across the whole organisation and will ultimately be made available publicly as well. I think it's really great that Council and um, GeoInt have been able to come together today, but it's the level of cross-industry interest and the great conversations, and I think there was 25 ideas that were suggested today that we'll whittle our way through. And, you know, identifying those pain points of the problem, so how do we get people involved, kids coming through STEM, getting in and knowing that GeoInt is a really good way for them to, to learn. But also matchmaking, I think, is the term that we should really be using around people who are smaller companies that can work with larger ones to achieve bigger outcomes. All of those components right through to providing spaces for people to work with like-minded people. Ultimately, it's the Manufacturing um, Excellence Forum MEF that we have here, um, a really good uh, starting base to go, well, there's another industry sector that's done something similar, let's repeat that over here and get a good outcome that extends the capability for the region. Uh, particularly the interest in workforce management uh, and, and actually attracting people to the industry, the geospatial industry, was very interesting. Um, schools, schools engagement and universities are so important to what we're trying to do here. They're getting skilled people in this area is very difficult in Australia. We, we do a lot of work with um, you know, schools, mostly looking at space camps with a company called One Giant Leap. Uh, we also look at universities and we guest lecturers at universities. Trying to encourage a pipeline of uh, STEM is very, very important for our industry. Yeah, the collaboration uh, with our universities, TAFEs and edu education sector is imperative to see that pipeline of talent uh, nurtured and grow in this space um, and raise the awareness within the sector uh, of up and coming students and we will work you know, with our uh, industries and our um, education facilities. My, my opening message today was a challenge to this room to consider their talent pipeline uh, and to consider the value of the products that they're delivering. I guess one thing that I would like to mention beyond those is the development at scale. Although we're here on the Sunshine Coast today, if the Centre of Excellence can turn its uh, expertise towards being able to process at scale, so I'm talking Queensland, 1.8 million square kilometres, or Australia even, um, I think there's exceptional opportunity for industry there and with tight government partnership there's exceptional benefits to be had. So one of the objectives for Sunshine Coast Council is to leverage the Sunshine Coast International Broadband Network which includes the cable that connects to the coast, the data centre and all our digital infrastructure uh, in the CBD in, an, in our region. To do that we are hosting sessions like this, ideation sessions to see what the opportunities and possibilities are for investment uh, and growth uh, for businesses in the region or outside of the region.